Now that we've covered how queues work at a fundamental level, let's have a look at how we can implement these in Go using slices. Now let's start off by defining a new struct, which will effectively represent our queue object. So queue struct. And we're going to give it a list of elements or a slice of elements within that, which are going to be of type int. Cool. Let's give it a comment. Our representation of a queue data structure. Cool. Cool. So let's start off by implementing the NQ function or method, I should say, that is going to effectively allow us to add new elements to the end of our queue. So let's call this, um, we'll pass in the queue as a pointer receiver. So queue, queue. We'll call this NQ. This will take in an element of type int. And we'll give it a comment to keep up good practices. So NQ will add an element of type int to the end of our queue. Perfect. So within the body of this function or method, we want to do the following. So q.elements, we want to call the append built-in function. This will take in q.elements and the new element. And that's really all there is to it. Now let's validate what we've done as correct by just a simple test within the main function. So we want to instantiate a new queue. Let's call, we'll print it out first of all. So fmt print line queue. We'll call the new method we've just defined. So in queue, passing in one. And then we'll print out the queue again. So let's try run this. So go run main.go. And as you can see here, we have successfully been able to append the element one to the end of the queue. And if we tried this again with two, we should see one, two. And yep. So the first element is one. The second element is going to be two. Cool. So we have an element within our queue now, or we have two elements, I should say. Now, how do we retrieve the first element from the start of this queue? Well, to do that, we're going to need to implement the DQ method. So let's do that just below where we've defined the NQ method. And it's going to have a very similar function signature. So it's going to take in a pointer receiver to the queue. It's going to be called DQ. And it's going to return the int. And let's give this a comment. So DQ. Um, returns the first element from our queue. Cool. Now let's think about how we're going to implement this. Now the first thing we want to be able to do is to return the first element, but we're also going to want to do the updating of the elements list or slice. Um, so update elements slice so that the first element has been removed. And we also want to do some error checking or some uh, validation. So validate queue is not empty. So let's tackle all of these in reverse order. So let's do the first. So if queue.elements, and let's say the length of this is equal to zero then return zero. So in this case, we could update the function signature. And I think I'm going to do that now to return an error. So return zero and errors dot new. And we'll say empty queue like so. Save that and make sure that you've imported the errors package. And the next thing we want to do is to then update and retrieve the first element from the slice. So the way we can do that is through um, the following assignment. So we could say that the element, so first element and the q.elements is equal to q.elements and we want the one at index zero. And then we can assign q.elements to be equal to q.elements 
and then we can use the slice notation to remove the first element from this array. Next, we can return the first element and nil, like so. And a wee bit of syntax we'll have to fix. So var first element is type int, and then instead of an assignment, we just change that to an equal sign, like so. Go. Cool. And we can change this to lowercase just to satisfy the linting. And then that should be us good to go. We've now implemented the validation that the queue is not empty. We've then updated the elements slice to remove the first element from the slice and return the first element. And we can now test this. So we can now go into the main function and do q.dq. And then we can print out not only just the queue, but the element itself. So fmt.println, the element, and the queue, like so. And we're going to ignore the error for now. Cool, so let's go into the terminal, go and run main.go. You can see that it's added or enqueued 1 and 2, 1 and 2, and then it's dequeued to the first element that we added to the queue, which is 1 and updated the queue so that it now only contains the second element which has yet to be dequeued. Cool, so we've got the two main methods implemented for the queue. Let's set about implementing the final three little auxiliary methods, which are going to be peak, is empty, and length. So let's start off with the length. So func queue takes in the pointer receiver to the queue, and we'll say length. This will return an int, and this is going to return the length of q dot elements, like so. Cool. Give this a comment. Spell length correctly. So length returns the length of our q. Nice. So the next thing we want to do is the is it empty method. So again, pointer receiver to the q object and is empty, this will return a boolean. And we can say that if q.length is equal to zero, then return true, otherwise return false. And again, give this a comment. So is empty returns true if q is empty. Nice. And my linter is complaining because we've been a wee bit more verbose than we need to be. And that's just to highlight the point. But we could rewrite this as return q.length equals zero, like so. And that makes all of this redundant and simplifies our code, which is quite nice. Now, the final method that we're going to implement is the peak method. So let's create a little bit of space and let's do func q pointer receiver to q peak this will return the int and we're just going to first check again so if the q dot is empty then return zero and we'll do another error return so errors dot new q empty q like so and we'll update the form, the method signature to return an error as well. So if the queue is not empty, then we want to return q.elements and the element at index zero with nil for error. Perfect. Let's give this a comment. So peak returns the first element from our queue without updating queue. Cool. Perfect. So in this video, we have effectively defined our own queue data structure, as well as all of the methods that the queue should have. And we've been able to test it using some very naive, I should say, tests. Um, if you wanted, you could take this a step further 
and define proper tests for each of these methods, but that is outside of the scope of this course.